Nice to have Steven Brault back, huh? Pitched well. Good guy. Fairly reliable. But 29 years old. And is he potentially part of this franchise's future? Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. And this is Daily Shot of Pirates coming your way from Milwaukee, where the the visitors lost 4-2 to two to the Brewers at American Family Field. And it was a game that, even though the Pirates led fairly late, never really felt like they were going to hold on. And I guess that's just the nature of the bullpen right now without Richard Rodriguez, with a couple other guys being down from pitching the previous night. You were thinking about who's out there, and you're going, oh, this isn't going to work out, and sure enough, it didn't. Kyle Keller put a couple of guys on. Chase and Shreve came in and gave up a three-run mega bomb to Eduardo Escobar, and that was that. But at the beginning of it, Brault pitched for the first time all season following that lat injury that he had back early in spring training. And he did okay. He did okay. Four innings, 75 pitches. Most of that was wrought through a 29-pitch first inning in which he was getting hit pretty hard and was kind of lucky to come out of it uh, without that much damage. But over the four innings, he gave up uh, one run, three hits, a couple of walks, a couple of strikeouts. More important than anything, he seemed to kind of settle down uh, after – all of that solid contact that Milwaukee's outstanding lineup was putting on him. And I asked him about that here afterward. Well, the first first inning, first few batters, really, there was some solid contact. And then there really wasn't much after that. Um, what changed uh, on your end? I think a lot of it was kind of getting over that initial, you know, adrenaline rush of finally being back in the big leagues again. It's been, gosh, you know, five months or whatever that I've been out. Um And so kind of settling in after that, um, I think, was just more consistent with the release point and everything and, you know, throwing it down the middle less. So uh, that definitely helps not give up so many hard hit balls. He did. He he got better. He got stronger. He got more in control, uh, less nervous is the word that Jacob Stallings used here to describe. And I can tell you that inside the stadium – you could tell how much better Brault was faring just based on the sound. The Brewers were booming the ball, and the place was really excited. And then once he got going, things kind of get quiet. And that's kind of your prototypical lefty, isn't it? You know what's another prototypical thing about a lefty? They get better with age. No one has ever been able to explain this to me. You hear baseball men say this sort of thing. Oh, yeah, he's a lefty. Oh, yeah, he he can blossom whenever. There's not really that much data to support it. There's some, but not a ton. It's more of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Even the most advanced analytical minds in the game who hold GM positions will agree that lefties come along later. And as a result, they give lefties more chances. Like it's the the lefties operating on a different age timeline as everyone else. Like if a lefty is 31, he's just getting going. If a righty is 31, he's on the decline. You know what I mean? So let's take this concept seriously and think about how or if Brault could fit into a, a rotation, not just for you know this year, next year, whatever, but into the future. Because he has, for anybody who doesn't know his contract status, and I wouldn't expect anyone to, he's just completing his first year under arbitration, which he was paid $2 million and change. And that means he's got two more years of arbitration before he can become a free agent, which means that he's going to be fairly affordable, especially coming off a season like this 
where he wasn't even available for close to four months. So is that someone that you keep in arbitration? Sure it is. Yeah, absolutely. Barring something, you know, surprising happening the rest of the way. But go a little further. Think about what Tyler Anderson was able to bring to the Pirates in the time that he was here. Anderson wasn't blowing anybody away. Brault sure won't. But he was out there as a reliable lefty who took the ball every fifth day, got guys out more often than not, pitched well, and it gave the rotation something of a, of a different feel. The Pirates don't have lefties coming up, at least not in the top level of the system. So if you're looking at, at the rotation as a whole, and again, I'm not projecting Greensboro grasshoppers into this equation. There's a long way for Quinn Priester and those kids to get up here. I'm looking more toward the next couple of years. Miguel Uhure is someone that I think a lot of. If you listen to this show, uh, you'll know that I'm a great admirer of his work. I think he's going to be a significant part of the Pirates rotation for years to come. Already here, JT Brubaker. Chad Cool. he certainly looked a lot better lately. What about Bryce Wilson? Pitched really well here the other night against the Brewers. And his six innings that night only ended up looking that much more impressive in light of the fact that everybody else got their brains beat out by the crew pretty much. Mitch Keller, nah. That always feels like a big detour bringing him up, doesn't it? Like you just got to go into this whole sidetrack about Mitch Keller this, Mitch Keller that. I have no idea what he is, and I don't even really care to debate him until he starts pitching better. If he doesn't pitch better, then I don't even want to think about him being in the rotation because he should probably just go into relief at that point. And everything about him through the minor leagues would have been grossly oversold by all of the independent rankings and services along the way. Max Kranich, nah. I mean, he had he had the one good day in St. Louis, and that's all we've seen from him so far. But the other guy that really jumps out into the equation, and this is pending his health, is Rowanzi Contreras, who was just just annihilating people in Altoona. And he did eventually get the call to Indianapolis, but that was when he ran into elbow slash forearm issues. And I'm sure the pirates are being, in fact, I know for certain that they're being extremely cautious with him and his arm. Uh, you know, we'll see how that goes in terms of whether or not he pitches again this season. But Contreras is a guy who was bringing a hundred miles an hour heat on top of a full arsenal and was just looking like something like special before he went down. Uh, he can't be considered very far away. So what did I just give you there? You know, there's a handful of guys and then there's a handful of, you know, guys. There's enough there to cobble something together to have an interesting rotation that's got possibilities, that's almost entirely young. But then there's Brault who would be 30 next year or 27 in right-handers years. When we come back, just one question. It's time for just one question. That's always brought to you on this program by our friends at North Shore Tavern, directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. Open and eager for your business when there aren't ball games across the street. When the Pirates are on the road, North Shore Tavern has to be the best place in town to go check out a game on the multiple TV sets that are there, surrounded by Pirates memorabilia and Pirates fans. Uh, cheering right along with you also happens to be the home of Steak on a Stone and all kinds of other superior food and drink items that they have. 
North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Question comes from Shane Kelly, who asks, DK, it feels like the Pirates pitching staff got zero favors the entire series, while the Brewer staff got every benefit of the doubt. No? Might be worth discussing as a segment on the podcast how bad the umps were all three games. Well, Shane, instead of breaking it down as a full segment here, we'll take it as your just one question. Uh, The umpires were, in fact, bad. As is almost always the case, they were bad for both teams. Were they tougher on the Pirates? Yes, but if you, if it sounds like I'm hesitating when I say that, it's because every time I verbalize something like that, it feels like I'm suggesting that they're playing favorites, like that they like the Brewers or they don't like the Pirates, and that's really not how this stuff works. Unless you're talking about an extreme example, like the NBA ref a few years ago who got caught, you know, fixing games. You're talking about good, honest people who've been doing this job all their lives. And they work up the ranks just like the players do. When they get called up to the major leagues, it's a really, really, really big deal for them. And you don't get there by saying, boy, I really hope Milwaukee beats Pittsburgh. You get there by being good at it. You do get evaluated. Um, They're obviously not flawless. And I thought, along with you, that in this series, that there were a lot of bad calls. A lot of them went against the Pirates pitchers and hitters. The more likely explanation for why that is, is that in all sports, and there is data to support this, officials are swayed by crowd reaction. They probably don't even realize it, and I'm sure every last one of them would deny it. But there's something human about being surrounded by... uh, The crowds here were mostly in the 23,000, 24,000 range. But you're there, and you're in this closed stadium with the roof closed, and there's a lot of noise. And there's the anticipation of a lot of noise, depending on what your call is. And in the moment when it happens, there's a, there has to be, there has to be a sense of internal satisfaction that when you make the strike call, you hear, "Ah." even though you tell yourself and think to yourself that it doesn't matter, there's just got to be an instant gratification or vindication that's in play there. I have asked Derek Shelton if he has believed that the Pirates get hosed by the umps on a regular basis because they're the Pirates and because they're where they are in the standings, more importantly. And he, on the record, said no, absolutely not. And he has to, because if he says something else, you know, what's going to happen? Every umpire will pass that on to the next umpire. And then you'll see the Pirates actually get hosed. So it's going to take time. I guarantee you, to phrase this another way, that from 2013 to 2015, when the Pirates were making the playoffs, they were getting more calls than their opponents were. That kind of happens across all sports but maybe more in baseball than in others i appreciate the question shane i appreciate everybody listening to daily shot of pirates we'll have another one tomorrow